Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message.
You don't know what to sing. You can sing in your head the language. So yeah, da da So yeah, da da So yeah, So You can trust in me. I'm your God. I'm your peace. I'm your strength. You can trust.
of my strength. How trust in you, God. You're my God. You're my peace. You're my strength, oh God. How trust in you, God. You're my God. You're my peace, Jesus. You're my strength, oh God. When nothing makes sense, oh God, you're my God, yeah. You're my peace, God. You're my strength, oh God. Oh God, I'm trusting you. Oh God, you're my God. Oh God, you're my peace, God. Oh God, you're my strength. I will trust in you. Oh, you're my God. God, you're my peace, God. Oh God, you're my strength, yeah. I will trust, I, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust. Can we all sing, I will trust? I will trust you, God. I will trust you. across this room. You're my God. You're my peace, yeah. You're my peace. You're my strength, yeah. You're my I'll trust you, God. Trust One more time. You're my God. You're my peace. You're my strength, God. And trust you. One more time, you're my God. My God, I need your peace, oh God. God, when everything's falling apart, God. God, when nothing makes sense, yeah, yeah. Come on, thank you, Lord. God, when everything's broken. God, when nothing makes sense, yeah. God, when it's all broken, God. God, when I can't see you. Oh God, when I can't see you, God, you're my peace. Oh God, you're my strength. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh, oh.
love you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Come on, you're my God. Just tell him that you're my God. You're my peace. I trust you, God. You're my God. You're my peace. Come on, he's everything I need. Everything I need. Everything, everything. In every season, you're my God. In every drought, you're my God. In every mountaintop, you're my God. In every valley, you're my God. In every storm, you're my God. In every darkness, you are my God. You are my peace. You are my strength. God's saying, I am the very wind that will begin to elevate and breathe life back into you, says the Lord. Jesus said, I am in him and he is in me. And without him, I can do nothing. And so make a rededication tonight. I'd say, Father, without you, I won't move. I won't do without you. I can't. I won't. You're my God. In every decision, you're my God. In every step, you're my God. In every season, that's my faith. That's my trust. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I don't know. This could be just for one person, but... Or many of us, probably. You know, so many times we want to get set free from things. And we struggle, like, getting free from anxiety, getting free from depression, or maybe getting free from, from negativity or, or getting free from an addiction or getting free from the bondage of, of this lack of forgiveness. We're getting free from resentment. I mean, I can just go on. Just, just knowing that you need to get free from something. Something that's just keeping you in prison and bondage, whatever. And you know that the only thing in Scripture that we find that can set us free is Jesus. I mean, who the, whom the Son sets free is free indeed, right? But I, I think where, where we all get, every single person here, including myself, we can all come to a place where, where we know we have head knowledge of the love of God, but we don't have heart knowledge of the love of God. And the Bible says that perfect love cast out fear. And there's the kind of love that you and I give, and that's temporary. Then there's the kind of love that God gives, and that's eternal. It's, it's powerful. It's, it's, it's transforming. It literally changes your countenance. It changes your spirit. It changes your attitude, actually. And, um, you know, and I was just thinking just about the love of God as, as we're all worshiping here, just thinking, man, God really loves us. And maybe you, you, you have not been able to get set free from something. Maybe there's something of bondage, something. And it doesn't have to be this deep sin. I mean, you can literally be in the place of just, you're a doubting Thomas. You're always doubting. And um, when you read that verse in the Bible that says, and perfect love cast out all fear, that means that there is nothing impossible for God. 
there is nothing difficult that God can't remove from your heart. Nothing, there's nothing in your heart. There's no brokenness. There's no challenge. There's no defeat. There's nothing that you can be holding in your heart that God can go deep down to the crevices of your heart and bring out. There's nothing, nothing. And as I just keep thinking about the love of God, I start thinking this. Do you realize that even if you're standing here today, and let's say you were held in bondage with something, and you know about that bondage. And let's say you had the attitude of, you know what, I don't even want to change. Do you realize the power of God's love that even if you did not want to change tonight, God would not stop loving you? Dang, that's like crazy love. That's called unconditional love. In other words, God doesn't set a condition on you whether or not he's going to love you. But when you finally have experienced the true love of God, it compels you to want to change. And the only reason that people come to that place where either they intentionally don't want to change or unintentionally they just keep finding themselves in the same place God wants to cast it all out. God wants to flood your heart. God wants to love you to death in order to raise you back to life. Like that's what God wants for every single one of us. And I believe that every person here needs just a little bit more of God's love tonight. Every person here. You could never be the person that says, well, I know that God loves me and I'm sufficient with the love I have. No, we're, we're always insufficient, but he's all sufficiency, amen? And so we need to know a new level of his love tonight. Because think about it. Right now, there may be an area in your life that you're not real happy about. There may be something in your life right now that you're not proud about, but perfect love can cast that out perfect love can literally flood our hearts tonight and begin to do heart surgery and he is the great physician we know that right so he does not make mistakes when he goes in he knows exactly where to go what places in your heart what places in your mind he knows exactly but we have to come to that place of cooperation and say God change even what I don't know about change even what I'm not aware about like most of us know our stuff Okay, But sometimes you can be at a high place with God where you think that, no, everything's good. I'm right where Pastor says, I, like, I know he's the, he, his perfect love casts out all fear, and I feel like I've heard. But how many know there's always, we live in a, in a broken world, so fear is always creeping in. The fear of believing in, in your call. The fear of believing in yourself. Right? The fear of failing. The fear of success. You know, what, what happens if I start getting all this? Then what do I do with it? That, that, that's fear. And God says, I want to I cast out all of it, every bit of it. I want no fear in you. And I really believe that that's what God wants to do to, church, to his church tonight. He wants to cast out all fear so that we can begin to experience all of his love. But maybe you're someone sitting and you're like, well, I'm not ready for that. Well, I wanted to make sure to just to let you know that even if you don't tonight, God still loves you. Even if you don't believe this, God still loves you. Even if you say, well, I'm not a Christian. I was just invited here tonight by, by my friend. and I'm, God still loves you. Well, I don't like what you're saying. God still loves you. Well, I don't like your music. Well, God still loves you. I don't like you having us stand this long. God still loves you. He loved, isn't that amazing that God loves us no matter just that it's not in God's DNA it's not in God's character as a matter of fact God God hates fear that's why he says I cast it out and so I just let's lift a hand to heaven or both hands whatever you feel comfortable with and let's just sing you're my God. You're my strength. I will trust in you. You're my love. You're my love. You're my love. You're my strength. I will 
trust in Come on, tell him how much you trust him tonight. Come on. You're my love. You're my peace. Tell him tonight. You're my strength. Tell him tonight. Tell him. Tell him. I will trust Tell him. Tell him how much you'll trust him. Love trusts. You're my love. us the way you have this night every day of our life but teach us Jesus teach us how to love our family teach us how to love our co-workers teach us how to love those that are in authority over us like our bosses our supervisors teach us how to love the unlovely God Lord teach us how to love that person that doesn't like us that person that despises us, that's that person who speaks ill of us. Lord, teach us how to love unconditionally with the love of God. Teach us to love. Father, let not our hearts be polluted by the hate and, 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 and by the fear of man. But Lord, I thank you that tonight we have a revelation of your love. Lord, I thank you that the kind of love that we'll give to people will not be controlling love. It will not be manipulative love. It will not be love if you do something for me, if you treat me this way, if you speak to me this way, then I'll love you. No, Lord, break our hearts tonight and give us the spirit of love. A love that never fails. A love that casts out all fear. A love that covers the multitude of sins. For you have covered our sins with your love. You have paid the price for our sins with your love. God, help us to know the height, the depth, the length, and the width of your love, God. We're not looking for a new revelation. Lord, we need the revelation of the love of Christ. Let that be the revelation tonight, how much you love us, how much you seek us, how much you run after us, how much you forgive us, how much mercy and grace you bestow upon us, Father. Even when we do not deserve it, you love even when we've been unfaithful, you have remained faithful to us. And our hearts have not been always faithful to you, God. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us because we know that we are fragile. We are weak. But in you, we're strong. But in Christ Jesus, we are strong. In Christ Jesus, we can love. In Christ Jesus, we can forgive. In Christ Jesus, we can love the most ugliest person, the most ugliest attitude, the most hateful individual. Give us this Love for you said that the world would know you by how we love one another. Let that love, Father God, just, just grow in us, Father. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on, tell the Lord, teach me love. Teach me how to love, God. Teach me how to love. Come on, tell him, I'll be your student. Teach me. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. In the name of Jesus, come on. Just tell him, Lord, teach me. Come on, I want your love. I want your love. Lord, pour out your love tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, tell him, Lord, show me. Yeah. children God teach us how to love our children not just our little ones father but even our older ones father our married children teach us how to love our grandchildren Lord teach us how to love the church how to love the person next to me come on put put your your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you and say father teach me how to love this difficult person Lord Please, Lord, teach me, show me. Help me love them, not only when they're for me, but help me love them when they're against me. Come on, seriously, right? Come on. Come on, you got to just say, God, teach me how to love like new again. Come on, if you came for anything tonight, I believe that God is teach He's speaking to us about his love. My God, it's a love that will cast out all fear. Come on, you've maybe you've been dealing with people that are the most harsh hard-hearted people you say God give me the kind of love that it's that love where it's like pouring hot coals on their head give me a love where I can give back a soft answer to turn away the wrath come on give me a love father God that I can say that it was God who changed them through my love it was the love of Jesus in me it was the love of Jesus through me it was his love that changed my family it was his love that changed my child it was his love that changed my church it was his love that changed a nation come on just begin to love love God with all your heart with all your soul with all your strength just love you Lord we love you Lord teach us teach us
Ashley, you know, the Lord would say to you, daughter, I've heard your cry. I've heard your prayers. You've even said things like this. I hear you in your room where you've said to God, God, I don't even feel like I belong. I don't feel I fit. Why am I here? And God's wants, wanting to reassure you that you are in his perfect plan. You are in his perfect will. And the things that you've been desiring, the things that you've been talking to God about, God's saying he's going to expedite those things, but you have to stay in step with him. Like, don't look for it. See, when you have to chase a blessing or a promise, then you can birth an Ishmael. The blessing will chase you. Never chase the blessings. The blessings will overtake you. The blessings are going to be so evident that even the people around you are going to say things like this, like, oh, man, that's so God. That's so the Lord. And so be at rest that you're in the right place at the right time, in the right season, with the right people. And God is working some things out in your heart, in your life. God is renewing your mind as well. I can see it in the spirit that God's like, he's changing some ways of thinking. And God's saying, God's going to expedite all this change and transformation. And to fret not, to not be anxious, don't worry about anything. God says, just pray. And he says, the God, my God of peace, will, will fill your mind and your heart. And, and this is just a reassurance that you're, you're in his perfect love. You're in, you're in the right season, so enjoy it right now. Because it's like, it's, it couldn't be any more perfect than this, honestly. It can't be more perfect. If you're thinking, it's, it's got to get better. No, this is, this is perfect. And it's a time of, of weeding out of things inside you. And it's a time of building. And it's almost like, like a renovation that's happening inside of you. There's a renewing. There's a renovation. There, there has been some past stuff, some things that you've experienced, some heavy, heavy pain and trauma. And God is renovating your life. God is renewing your life. God is healing those broken places. Like I see you as a house, and I see broken walls and broken frames and broken things. And God's saying, daughter, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to renew you. I'm going to restore you. We're going to start afresh, and it'll never, ever be the same again. It'll never, you'll never step into something like that. You will never, ever find yourself in a place like that because you will walk circumspectly before me, says the Lord. You will honor me. You will serve me. You will obey me. Immediately, God says, when you hear my voice, you will respond, says the Lord. And so get ready because there's a, there's a renovation happening in your spirit. There's a renovation happening in your life. So rejoice because you're in this perfect place. Amen. Let's just keep waiting for the Lord. Thank you, Father. I might as well pray for you too. Ashley's grandma. I don't know Ashley very well, by the way, because I know her name because we, we all work for Zoe. Uh, but Zoe's grandma passed away. Great grandma, sorry. And, uh, and I know she's going back home. And uh, we're going to just pray for God's, God's peace over the whole family because even though it's great grandma, 104 years old, how about that? Wow, that's a full life, you know? Wow, 104. Wow. We gotta believe God for that, huh? Ninety-one years with Jesus, walking with Jesus. God, please help us, Jesus, right? Ninety-one years. Wow. All right. Stretch out your hands to Ashley, Father. We thank you for Ashley and and all her family, Father. We thank you for for mom and 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 all the nephews and nieces and grandchildren and. Lord, every single one of them, Lord, I thank you that each one knows that grandma didn't die. No, we're dying. She's living now. We're, we're the ones that are all dying right now. 
She's more alive. She's in glory. She, she's where we all hopefully want to be one day. We're in the presence of Almighty God. She's dancing. She's got a brand new body. I mean, if you think she had a spunk then, just imagine her now. Just see her dancing before the streets of gold, just dancing before the Lord. And she's probably saying to you, don't cry for me, Argentina. Are you crazy? I would never come back. And so, Father, we just thank you for that joy. Even as they do uh, uh, her great-grandmother's celebration service, Father, I thank you that you're going to give a, a definitive picture of how she's dancing before you, Father. I thank you that each one of that's what I'm praying, that each one are, you're going to be hearing people say, I saw grandma, great grandma dancing. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that right now. We seal it, and, and you'll see that that will be the sign and the wonder that God is showing you that all is well and your family will be well. Now, take her life and let that be the legacy. Let that be the legacy that you'll serve the Lord until you're 120 in Jesus' name. We pray a long life for you in Jesus' name. You tell the Lord, Lord, I want those genes in Jesus' name. Give them to me. Amen. Strong, whole, and healed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Father God. Let's just wait on God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. would say rest son rest rest in me says the Lord fear not the Lord would say there's still much to do there's still much to accomplish The Lord is saying tonight, I want you to open your heart and your mind because I'm going to download new visions and dreams, says the Lord. There will be things that won't even look like what you're used to, says God. There'll be images and things that I'll place before you and you'll be like, that doesn't make any sense. God says, that's exactly who I am to you. I, I, I won't make sense. I, I, it's the, the numbers are not going to add up. The things I'm going to ask you to do are going to be, they're going to be new. God's saying I'm bringing you to a season of a supernatural faith, a faith that is going to be super. My super on your natural, says the Lord. God's saying, son, I've seen the work that you have done. I've seen the years of faithfulness that you have lived. And I'm going to be giving you, and, and get ready, because it's going to be like, like something completely different. It's, I don't know what he's going to speak to your heart to do, but it's going to look different. It's not going to be the same old usual, which there's nothing wrong with that. But God's saying, uh, it's almost like he's going to reignite something inside of you. There's going to be a, a reigniting of, of, of passion for for, for his purpose. I don't know what that is, and I'm not saying you haven't been doing what he's asked you to do, but I'm saying that he's going to ignite, reignite some places in your life, maybe some places that have been dead. God's saying, son, I will breathe life this night, and you will begin to fan that flame. It's like Paul told Timothy, fan the flame that is within you. Stir the gift that is within you. And so God's saying, son, I'm going to, I'm going to create a new fire in you, a fresh fire a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's been something you've been missing, says the Lord. And God's saying, son, tonight I'm giving it to you. Maybe you wondered, why did it take this long? God's saying, son, my timing is perfect. It's perfect. And so tonight, Lord, we just baptize him with the baptism of Holy Ghost and fire. 
Holy Ghost and fire, Lord. Whatever it is that he's been missing, you said, with you, God, nothing's missing, nothing's broken. And so, Lord, we release, we release this fire. We release these things that you want to deposit in him in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that, Lord, there will be nights where he will speak to you through visions and dreams. You'll be sitting down reading your Bible and then the words will jump off the page. You'll be hearing people speak things of God and all of a sudden a word will leap and then there's going to be this excitement and things are, it's going to be like a puzzle piece. You're going to start putting the puzzle, the puzzle pieces together and it's going to make total sense to you. It's not going to take long. Before the end of this year you will be stepping into 2020 with great vision and so we receive that by faith right now in jesus name bless this family father bless this family lord bless this family in jesus name thank you lord thank you father you can be seated it's okay i know you can get tired can't you Now you know how I feel on Sunday, standing three services, huh? Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray for a few people. Um, we're going to pray for Yesenia. Yesenia serves with our team here. She's uh, a phenomenal, phenomenal woman. She went on our mission trip to Oaxaca, Mexico twice. And let me tell you, that woman is a fireball. She's been challenged in her health for many years since she was a child. And, um, and has this very rare disease. But it's amazing that how the grace of God has worked through her, her life. Like even this trip to Oaxaca, she was afraid of going because of the challenges. And, and then a surgery she was preparing to have, which she had already. Uh, but she went, and let me tell you something. You know, the word of the Lord to her was, you know what? You're going to have strength while you're there. You're going to be refreshed. It's going to be amazing. And and it was exactly that. She's the only one that didn't get sick, you know, from the mission team. It was amazing, you know. So she just had her surgery, and she's in the hospital right now. And we want to pray for her for, um, you know, every organ to begin to function the way it's supposed to so that they can release her. And so let's just keep it real. She's waiting for that valve movement. Amen. So we're going to believe for that vow. Let's keep it real here at Elevate Church. We don't play around. We'll tell on you. You need a valve movement. It's awesome. And then Sogo. Sogo is someone who's a, her and her husband are just two amazing people. She's been in the hospital. Um, I don't, I'm sure she'll share it here one day, but she was eating a sandwich at a restaurant. Be very careful. And I guess the restaurant left a screw inside the sandwich. Man, the devil is a liar, huh? And so it really messed her up, and uh, and so she had to go through surgery as well, and just you know all kinds of stuff. But we're gonna pray for Sogol, and then uh, Maggie. Maggie is a wonderful, amazing friend of Elevate Church. Uh, Vanessa, uh, her daughter attends this church. The grandchildren, her daughters, all of them. And Maggie's been battling cancer, and so we're gonna keep praying and believing that all is well. Amen. We're gonna believe God for her healing, and. Um, and so, and then my wife, we're going to pray for her because, you know, when we got back from Mexico, she got really sick. Um, she got hit with all kinds of stuff. I think it was something from Mexico started with like, they started saying E. coli and then infection in the kidneys because of water, all kinds of stuff. They couldn't pinpoint it, but the hospital gave her the wrong medication. And, uh, and so it dropped her blood pressure. And so today we had to take her back. And we found out that it was, they gave her the wrong stuff at the hospital. And, and so no wonder she wasn't recovering as fast. We're kind of tripping out, like, what's going on? Uh, but she's at home tonight resting and, and is, uh, is, is going to be back up on her feet. And we're going to pray for her as well, okay? So, uh, and if you need any healing in your body, just lift your hand high real quickly. And, and we'll make sure that we pray for you as well. Anybody? Yeah, okay, awesome. Or if you have a family member that needs prayer, we're going to... I want you to just extend your faith and say, I'm praying. I'm praying for that. Yeah. Cassie's in the hospital? Okay. She's minor stroke? Okay. Okay, so Cassie, she's amazing. Oh, my gosh. Amazing woman. She's our greeter, uh, African-American lady about this short. But, man, she is a bulldog. Have you ever talked to her? Uh, she's doing good. Awesome. <laughs> you spoke the first word she said out of her mouth was God is good. 
this morning. That's awesome. Cassie's a, man, that woman's a, she's a fireball. She is, you know, she, she'll get in your face too. She's done it to me plenty of times. Yeah, I love her. I love her. She's the only one I let correct me like that after a sermon. <laughs> she's amazing. I love her. Okay, so Cassie, all right, let's, let's pray. Uh, why don't we do this? Uh, uh, Jessica, why don't you grab a microphone? We'll pray. You'll pray for uh, my wife and Yesenia. And then uh, let's get uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, get up here. You'll pray for Sogol. And, um, and then for Maggie. Vicky, what the heck? You're here with me, girl, tonight. Come on, somebody. Vicky will come up and pray as well. Vicky's a really good friend. We, 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 we're a team for Zoe. And she helps my wife and I so much as we travel and do stuff in Mexico. And uh, so she's, she's a bulldog as well. Oh, my God. If you, want, if you want a friend, okay, that is real, authentic, genuine, that's someone that, that I can speak to freely. She's amazing. I, I trust you with our life. Yeah, really, Vicky. I love Vicky. And uh, so you'll pray for Maggie. Maggie's the one who's, uh, we prayed for her last month here. Remember the cancer? You remember? Okay, so you just pray for Maggie. And, uh, and then if you're sick in body, I want you just to lift your hand because heaven's here right now. And I want you just to allow God to start touching you and, and we'll all pray together. So let's pray like it was your family. Can you do that with me tonight? Let's pray. Ready? Okay, well, who wants to go? Jessica, you go first, Father, and then we Vicky. Thank you. We thank you that you are a God of you, miracles. Jesus. You are a God of the impossible. And we just declare healing you, in this house right now. We thank declare you, healing over everybody in thank the you, name Father. of Jesus. We declare healing, God. We grab you, our Jesus. healing, Father. We thank hang you, on Father. to our healing, Lord. And we know, Father, that you took every mm -hmm. infirmity on the cross. Yes. And so right now, we cover our pastor. We yeah, cover Pastor Virginia. So little, we say what the enemy means for bad, that you're going to turn it around for good in her life. Yes, God, Lord. we thank you, Father, that as she recovers, Lord, that she has perfect peace, perfect rest, Father, that you are strengthening her, her bones, her lungs, her every part of her, Father, that needs rest, Father. We thank you, God, that she's going to come back ready to do amazing things for you, Father, because her strength is going to be back. We thank you, Father, that in this time, the joy of the Lord is her strength, that even as she lays on her bed recovering in your presence, God, I pray that you would touch her in a special way. I pray that she would be refreshed fresh in your presence and we speak life and health over her and we thank you for Yesenia God we thank you father that she is not stopped God we thank you that she has a call in her life and she will complete that call father we thank you that what you've begun in Yesenia you will finish father and we so we speak healing we thank you for her bowels father that they will move God we thank you father that she will be out of the hospital quickly God and she will have a testimony to share in the name of Jesus yes father thank you Jesus Thank you. Jesus, we know that you are in this place tonight, but you are also by Sogol. Lord, you have been there from the beginning, Lord Jesus. And we just lift up Sogol today, Lord God. We just, we know that the enemy has no hand in Sogol's plan, Lord, and that your plan is perfect and good, and it will come to pass in her life, Lord. And we just lift up her and her family. We pray that you give her family strength, Lord Jesus. And we pray that you provide supernatural healing for her, Lord Jesus, and that no damage um, can come in between what you have for her, Lord yes, God. Father. And we Thank just pray you, over her children, Lord Jesus, and over her husband, Lord, and Nick. We lift them up to give them strength to be able to get through this situation, Lord Jesus. And we pray all this in your name, Jesus. Thank you. Father God, we thank you that you are our healer. Thank you, Jesus, that you come and meet us right where we are. And Jesus, we pray that you would come and touch Miss Maggie's body. Thank you, Father. Lord, that you would wash away the cancer. Yeah. Lord, that you would wash away the fear and Thank the you, doubt Jesus. in her mind. Yes. And Lord, I pray that as love comes and pours over her, Thank that you, that Father. cancer would be released. Jesus, yeah. I pray that you would speak to us in this room how we're to keep all of these in front of us to pray Thank for, you, to send text messages, to send email to go and take Jesus. food to family to carry the burden you, and lord that we would extend our faith and pray you, over miss maggie and the others you, that are represented here you, jesus, jesus we pray for healing and that her body would receive the healing thank that you, it's Father. meant to receive but god yeah. we pray against doubt 
And we yes, pray, Father. Jesus, that she would be oh, vibrant, Lord, that she would continue, continue to walk in her faith and receive the healing. Lord, we thank you that you're releasing it even yes. now and that we would hear testimony yeah, that she was so feeling Lord. so good and doing more than she's done in the days yes. past. In Jesus' name, thank you. amen. Amen, amen. Just stand to your feet. We have a word. Listen, I know I have a word from heaven tonight. But I want us to just prepare because this, this song is going to reflect the message I'm going to bring to you tonight. And uh, God's not finished with us, but let me tell you what he is doing. I really believe even us praying for people, that, that takes love. It takes, it takes patience because you know what? When you come to service, you tend to want to what? Receive. But healthy love is a two-way street. It knows how to receive and it knows how to what? Give. And so thank you for being patient and praying. And Father, I pray for those that lifted their hands. Uh, there's someone that came in tonight with a horrible headache. Lift your hand high quickly. Father, touch that hand right now, Father. Remove that headache in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your love conquers headaches in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe, we take authority over every headache that would try to come in and bring any form of ache or pain. Lord, I thank you that this person or persons is free right now from this headache. Right now, at the sound of our clap, Father God, at the sound of our clap, at the sound of our clap, come on, at the sound of your praise, give Jesus a praise. Lord, headaches have no place. Headaches must go in Jesus' name. We believe. We believe right now. Right now. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Who was that? Who had a headache? Who had a headache? Quicker. You had a headache? Was it pounding? Behind your eyes? So before I spoke that was was it hurting? How is it how's it feeling now? What percentage? Zero? So you're complete. Okay, awesome. Anyone else? Don't, don't be nervous. Don't be like, oh, I don't want to lift my head. Don't be that person. Man, God did that for you. Yes. Can someone run over there with a microphone? That'd be awesome. Well, let's not pass it. Okay. All right, we'll pass it to you. Sorry. Cool. Okay, say that again one more time. I have a shunt in my brain, and I had it, I've had it for years now. A shunt? And yes, I had um, hydrocephalus, hydrocephalus at the age of 40. And I, they did three brain surgeries, and the last one they put a shunt in my brain. I have migraines every day, but I wanted to come to service today. I didn't have a, a headache today. And this sweet lady behind me, she was praising, and she didn't know who I am and what's going on. She tapped my head. <laughs> By a mistake. Really? By a mistake. Really? Okay. And any kind of um, touch on my head sometimes gives me a headache. And I started getting a headache. And I was going to ask my daughter for some water so I could take something. But you praying and saying that, it feels much better now. Come on. God is good. Better. Amen. God is good. Amen. Thank you. And thank you, ma'am, for touching her head. That's awesome. That's awesome. Y'all introduce yourself to each other. That's awesome. Any, did anybody else have a headache before we started? Anybody here? Okay, that's awesome. So two people got it. Okay, that's cool. I'm that's, 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 that's the faith we're talking about. Listen, how can you expect a supernatural outcome if you can't believe for a supernatural work of God, right? I mean, you can't even begin to think about a supernatural. Oh, yeah, I believe in God. Well, if you believe in God, then you better believe in a super. Right? He, his super and your natural miracles take place. And so, Father, what's your name, ma'am? Jean? Father, we just thank you that you who has begun the good work in Jean, you're going to finish it. Ma'am, that hit, that hit her earlier, would you lay your hand on her? I know you didn't hit her, hit her. You know what I mean. <laughs> just lay your hands on her, please. We're going to pray. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that we have faith to believe 
that you who has begun the good work in Jean's heart, mind, soul, and every muscle, tissue, fiber, cell, organ, Lord, I thank you that her brain is completely healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that, that headaches will be of the past. That, Lord, you're doing a new thing in her. There's a new season. Lord, there's just joy just bursting out of her, out of her life, Father. I thank you that you're even giving her vision. You're giving her vision for new stuff. Come on, God, I, 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 I really feel that God is going to activate you as of this night. And you're going to find a cause. You're going to find a project. God's giving you something tonight. And I pray in Jesus' name that it's going to chase you down. You're going you're gonna to hear it. Someone's going to tell you, and you're going to be like, I, you're going to be like the Nehemiah of the 21st century. When you hear the word of something that's going to be brought to you, man, you're going to begin to pray, and God's just going to put that on your heart, and God's going to use you, and the favor of God will be with you, and God's going to provide the resources for it, and it's going to be a supernatural work, and the, 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 the last days of your life will be better than the former days of your life. And so, Lord, we release that over her life. We declare tonight in Jesus' name that there is a Holy Ghost activation happening in her and that you're going to do great things through her in Jesus' name because you're the way maker. Come on, say that with me. You're the way maker. Bless you, Lord. Come on, let's sing this song. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Every voice all across this room. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's declare that one time. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. I worship you, I worship you. Let's declare Waymaker, Waymaker. Oh 
next moment and make a song unto the Lord. Come up with your own melody. Everybody fill your voices in this room. Come up with your own melody. Close your eyes. Don't wait for us to lead you. You make ways out of no ways, God. You make ways out of no ways. Clear those words over. Love, strength, peace, joy, hope, love. Let's keep saying love. I feel like somebody needs to hear that. Say love, love, love. Oh God, oh God, love. Joy, joy. 
joy, peace, peace, strength, strength, love, love, hope, hope faith, faith. We need you, God. Let's see, pray on my time. second go ahead keep playing please before we leave tonight I have to make sure to give you this word is that okay you know Elevate Nights is from 7 to 9 right you know that right and then I said and if it doesn't go till 9 we're going to do whatever God wants right yeah because we're hungry for God and God keeps showing up and doing amazing things so worship team you guys can sit down if you like on the front if you want to chill for a little bit maybe just piano and uh, we'll get right back in this but I want you to say this with me. Say, I am flowing in the direction of God's promise. Now say it to yourself like, like you're trying to understand this. Say it. I am flowing in the direction of God's promise. Let me show you a picture of the, of, the, of the Dead Sea. If you've ever been to Israel, this is definitely a great place to go visit. I remember being in Israel, I don't know, maybe about three years ago. And, um, and I visited this place. And it's very interesting because definitely no one can drown in this place. Because you literally float. It's the most amazing thing. Uh, you float in this water. As a matter of fact, it's called the Dead Sea for that very reason. There's nothing living in there. Nothing. No fish. No creature. No bug. There is nothing alive in that thing right there. And... Um, and you wonder then if nothing's living, then what's up with all this water? Well, kind of like a train. Like if you've ever been on a subway or if you've ever been on the Metrolink, every single train has an end of its track, right? So right here, the, red, the, the Dead Sea is a basically end of the road type of picture I can give you. All the water from Israel, when it, when, when, when it rains... Um, it flows, and it flows into this, this big lake of water. But the, the thing is that when you see the red, the, I'm sorry, the Dead Sea, I keep saying red, the Dead Sea, um, it stays stagnant. There's, there's, there's water flowing in, but there's no outlet for that water. So what does that mean? It's stagnant. And one of the most craziest fun facts about the Dead Sea is that the Dead Sea is at the lowest part of the earth. The lowest of the lowest part. It's like 1,400 uh, feet below sea level. So it's, it's the lowest part. And I say this because have you ever felt at the lowest place of your life? And when you're at the lowest place of your life, you feel stagnant. You feel like you're just stuck. And there's no flow. So it just stands there. There's just So what happens? Well, it evaporates because it's also a very hot place year-round. It's just like the, the heat, it just scorches that water, and it starts evaporating. But, it, you know, there's rain, water flows in, but nothing flows out. And so it just sits there. And I really believe that, that God wants his people to have a flow. And maybe you're in a season where you've been just stuck, just stagnant, 
just sitting there and just maybe you've lost a little bit of faith. I don't know, but I think that every single one of us hit a place where just nothing's happening. But how many know that when God gives a prophetic word to anyone, and, and I don't mean like a prophet came and gave you a prophetic word. I'm talking about you yourself opened your Bible and you're reading God's prophetic word for your life right? All kinds of promises that he puts in the Bible for, for our families, for our health, for our future, for our purpose, everything. Like you have a prophetic word. You do. Whether you know it or not, or whether you've been intentional to understand the Bible, but every single one of you have a prophetic word from heaven. And I'm here to encourage you tonight that you don't have to live in a season of struggle for the rest of your life. Because I know so many times it's so easy to get so caught up in what's not happening that it's almost like you self-curse yourself and maybe I'm doing something wrong and, and maybe, you know what, uh, I've opened the door for the devil. And, may, and yes, things like that do happen, but I think too many times we just live there. We park ourselves there and then we become the most negative, complaining, whining kind of people like the Israelites. And then we wonder why you wake up one day and let's say you're 30, you're 40, you're 50, you're 60, you're 70, and maybe you're resentful, you're anger, you're bitter, you feel like a sense of lack of accomplishment, I should be further. And, and the reality is that the only limitation is you, me. We're the only ones. I'm here to tell us that God is wanting to bring his church into a season of flowing. God wants you to flow. As a matter of fact, when God spoke to the children of Israel, though they had a very harsh past, though they were in the desert, God said, I want to give you a land with milk and what? Honey. And he said, and it's what? Flowing with milk and honey. So God, God's not about a stagnant, stand-alone type of God. God. God has things flowing in your life. And as I was just preparing for tonight's message, I started thinking about, this Red Sea, I'm sorry, this Dead Sea, and how, how we can easily relate to the children of Israel having seasons in their life where they just kind of, they just stood there. And I want to read to you real quickly with the little bit of time we have left. Quickly, go to Genesis 50, verse 25 through 26. It says this. It says, Joseph, everybody say Joseph, just so you don't get it twisted. It said, Joseph made the Israelites promise him. He said, God will surely come to help you. So, so Joseph is on his deathbed, just so you guys know. We know the story of Joseph, right? He's, he's, you know, he's, he's, like the, he's wearing the coat of many colors. He's favored by God, favored by his dad. His brothers hate him. He goes through hell, not here to preach his sermon, you know, that sermon. But I want to remind you, this is the end of Joseph's life. He is on his deathbed, and he's telling the children of Israel to give him a promise. Now, at this point, there's a different Pharaoh. So Joseph obviously had a revelation from God that something was coming that wasn't going to be easy. And so he says that he told the Israelites to promise him. He said, God will surely come help you. Then you must carry my bones. Everybody say, my bones. <laughs> he says, then you shall carry my bones up from this place. And so Joseph died at the age of 110 years old. And they prepared his body to be buried. Then he was placed in a casket in Egypt. And we know the story. We know that in this context of the story, Joseph, he finished his season. He, he, he worked out God's promise. But even on his deathbed, Joseph still had more promise. That he was willing to ask the children of Israel, I want you to make me a promise. Like, you're dying and you still are thriving with promise. Like, can you be at your lowest point of life and still having this faith to tell people, but make this promise to me? Just, just get the image, okay? So he's on his deathbed and the brother is still speaking vision. Make me a promise. I'm not going to stay here. There's a promise God doesn't want you to stay here. Doesn't want you to stay there. Doesn't want you to live there. Doesn't want you to dwell there forever. He wants you to flow with milk and honey. Amen. You getting this, guys? And so we know the story that the children of Israel, how many made it, made it into the promised land out of 3 million? Do you guys remember that number? 
out of three million Israelites, how many made it to the actual promised land that God promised? This isn't a test. Like, I'm not testing you. Two people, right, made it into the promised land, right? And who were their names? Joshua and Caleb, right? And so do you remember when God promised them and then all of Israel started coming against the tribes and everyone, you know, you, you know that's a whole other sermon too. But they, they all started fighting against the idea of stepping into a land flowing with milk and honey. And it's interesting because it sucks because only two out of three million people actually walked in to the promise. That means that three million people literally could not accept the promise of God. They just got stagnant like the Dead Sea. They just, they just died in the desert. Not, not so for you. Don't die in the desert. Don't die there. And um, as you keep reading the story of, of the Israelites and, and you think about these two men, um, you have to remind yourself that you have a promise from God. And you have to tell yourself, I will be one out of three million that will enter my promise. I will be one that will take the prophetic word that God has spoken over my life, and I will enter the promise. And regardless of what you feel or what you think, or regardless of what other, another person's opinion is about you, the only opinion that should matter is God's opinion concerning you. Come on, God said this. He said, if I be for you, who could be against you? He said, though the enemy may be coming at you one way, he says, but he's going to flee seven ways. He said, he said to you and me, he said that he will finish the good work that he begun in you. He will finish it. He says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. So regardless of what opinions other people may have about you or regardless of what the enemy has brought against you, God has promised that you will make it to the other side. That's a promise from God. But you have to remind yourself that I'm not going to be the Dead Sea for the rest of my life. I'm not going to just stand there and just accept this. I'm going to have this spirit of Joseph, where Joseph at his deathbed is saying, man, y'all better make me a promise. Think about it. Joseph said, the Lord will help you. He already had a revelation of what, of what was going to happen with this new Pharaoh and Israel. And regardless of the challenge, like right now, maybe there's something big that you want to accomplish. Maybe there's something that you want to see come to pass in your life. Maybe there's this dream that you've been believing God for, but, but there's the Pharaohs of your life coming against it. You have to have the attitude that the Lord will help me. The Lord is going to help me through this thing. You may have people coming against you. The Lord will help me through this situation. You may have an issue in your economy. Your economy is telling you, you're not going to make it. The Lord will help me. Maybe emotionally, you're an emotional wreck right now. You, you, you feel like, man, I have this deep oppression or depression. The Lord will help you. And so just understand that, that Joseph had this 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 divine faith. He had this, this divine hope that he would not only speak hope to the children of Israel, but that he would even speak hope for himself. He says, man, you better make me a promise. You better not leave me here in Egypt. In other words, God was still speaking vision to this man. Even on his deathbed, God is giving him visions and dreams. So you could never say that God's not speaking because God was speaking to a man who was laying in his deathbed, and yet he still had vision to be in the promised land. So how many know that attitude has everything to do with you stepping into your promised land? The attitude of your faith has everything to do whether or not you're going to step in to that next level, that next season, that next promise, that next dream, that next promotion, you have to realize, you have to have this, this attitude that says, my God, to hear these words of Joseph, that even though he had already finished all that God had given him to do, he still had vision for more. That's what God wants for all of us. And so God is, he's not pointing us 
anywhere to a place of a darker season. If not, he's pointing us to a better future. He's pointing us to a better us, a better you, a better me. Like God's saying, Mauricio, I'm trying to direct you to be better. He's saying to you, church, I'm trying to give you a better future. Stop staying so stuck on on your past or maybe even your present right now. Maybe your present is telling you you're done, but God's saying, I'm not, I'm not speaking that season into your life. I'm speaking into your future. Come on, you can be sure with God's prophetic word, can't you? You can be so sure that when God speaks, speaks a prophetic word, he will bring it to pass. But we got to come back to that place of faith, guys. We have to. We must come back to that place of faith. And so your faith is the main, it's the main ingredient to your attitude. It's the main ingredient to your attitude in order for you to enter to that promise. And I don't know what all of you have going on or what you want to see happen, but, man, faith is the, it's the main ingredient. We need to have faith in God more than ever, more than ever. Look at Hebrews 11.3. It says this. It says, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. He says, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. What happened to the children of Israel? They, they could only believe God based on what he was willing to show them. And God's like, I'm trying to get you to a place to have the kind of faith where you start seeing it in the spirit before you start seeing it in the natural. God wants you to see your healing already in the spirit. Maybe you're someone that's sick or you know someone that's very sick. We need to see the healing in the spirit before it can manifest in the natural. And, but that's an attitude because most people don't have that kind of righteous attitude. They have more of an attitude of, God, show me so I can believe you. God's like, no, just believe me and then I can show you some crazy stuff. It's an attitude and it's your attitude that will keep you out of God's promise or will help you step into his promise it's an attitude and how many know there's a lot of bad attitudes in the church today there's so many bad attitudes like you can't even preach a message of faith because it's not enough you can't you can't lay hand hands on the sick because it's not enough you know why because we have been so conditioned to be a culture or a society or a people or God's people that have to see it in order to believe it and God's stepping listen God is he's trying to step up our faith to this place again where we start seeing things in the spirit and start calling those things that that are not as though they were you have to start saying I can see I can see my family being restored I can see I can see that God is going to help me with my child I can see I see my child coming back to Jesus I can you start seeing you close your eyes and you start seeing the best you start seeing the future that God his preferred future and you start seeing yourself well and you start seeing yourself whole and you start when you start seeing like that man you got some Joseph spirit in you you got a Joseph attitude look at your neighbor and say what do you see the Israelites kept wanting proof and God's just like man I'm and even when he showed them proof, they still, wouldn't, they still wouldn't accept it. They still wouldn't accept. God, God said, I'm giving you a land flowing. with." I mean, he even showed them something that was flowing. The dead sea does not flow. God's promise flows. There's a flowing with God. There's no such thing as stagnant with God. God will flow even when you're in the deepest, darkest hour of your life, even when you claim to to be in places called the desert or the wilderness experience. Even in the wilderness, God will flow you through it. Amen? You won't stay there forever. Look at James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 says this. My brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble. When you do, think of it as pure joy. Why? Because you're flowing. Your faith will be tested. You know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. I would say continue to flow. See, when your faith is tested, it, it, it allows you to continue. Like, okay, God's going to help me through this. I'm going to get out of the situation. I'm, I'm gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me the strength to continue not give up. And he says this. And you know that when this happens, it will produce in you the strength to continue. And you must allow this strength to finish its work. You must allow this strength to finish its work. Then you will be all you should be. 
So right now, guess what? You're in process. You're, you're still becoming what God wants you to be. And he says, you will have everything you need. I don't know about you, but man, I want to be the one out of three million that makes it into God's promise. Like, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that church that we didn't make it in because, because of our attitude of lack of faith and believing that God can get us through this. And so at this point, you have just picture Joseph on the bed. And, and you know what, what's pretty cool? I read that in, in, in Genesis, right? But do you realize that, that the Apostle Paul brings him up in the New Testament? Let me read you the verse. Look at, look at uh, Hebrews eleven twenty two quickly, quickly. He says, by faith, Joseph, when his end was near, look at this. He spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, and he gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. In Hebrews eleven twenty two, in the in the Passion version, I love this one. It says, "Faith inspired." Everybody say, "Faith inspired." Faith inspired Joseph, and opened his eyes to see into the what future. So just think about this. So faith inspired Joseph while he was on his deathbed. And he said it inspired him to see into the future. In other words, Joseph already saw what God was going to do with the children of Israel. The children of Israel were going to be set free from Egypt. The children of Israel were going to enter into a promise. And Joseph had, had this, this revelation, that this, this prophetic vision that God gave him. And he said, Joseph, you're going to go into the promised land too. And so he says this. And so for, for, he, for as he was dying, he prophesied about the exodus. Dang. He prophesied about the exodus of Israel out of Egypt and gave instructions. Once again, look at this. That his bones were to be what? Taken from Egypt with them. What if we started living inspired lives because of our faith like Joseph, like regardless of what you feel. Like basically what Joseph was saying, like even if I die, I will die fighting. Even if I die, I will die trying. Even if I die, I will die believing. And so many times, we have this challenge of believing when you're in the mess, when you're in the circumstance. But Joseph was like, no, 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 no. I have seen the prophetic future. I have seen how God is going to help you get to the promised land. And the only promise I'm asking you is, man, when I am dead, when I am long gone, you better take me with you. Even in his death dead bones he's saying take me to the promised land like why can't we have that kind of faith like even if I die I'm gonna die trying I'm gonna die fighting I'm gonna die believing I'm gonna die just going for it. I'm just I don't give a rip if I never see it I'm gonna I'm going to die believing it to my last breath but I'm too old you're never too old that's some, that's some crazy faith, huh? That's what God wants for his church today. He wants us to have this attitude that no matter what, and, and you know what? I, I love this because as you keep reading in Hebrews eleven thirteen, 13, look at the screen quickly. We're almost done. It says these heroes all died. Ever say, they all died. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, you're a hero of faith. Tell them, I need you. We need you. Look, it says, it says these heroes all died still clinging to their faith. Not even receiving all that had been promised them. It didn't say they didn't receive anything. It said they didn't receive all of it. That means that God's promise is so much that dang, there's not enough life to experience it. That's how good God is. God does so much. That's why he says he's the God of exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask whole thing or imagine but you know what we do we get caught up with what we have God's like you don't have enough life you don't have enough years you don't have that's why that's why we have this thing called legacy 
That's why we have to pass the baton. That's why we have to make sure Joseph was thinking about his children and his children's children. He had, he had this eternal faith. He's like, man, even when I'm dead, man, you take these dead bones into that promised land. So the truth is this. Two didn't make it into the promised land. Three made it into the promised land. There was Caleb. There was Joshua. And then he had a bag of bones. That's crazy. A dead man walked into his promise. Why? Because till his last breath, he was willing to die, fighting, trying, and believing. Till his last breath. I pray that that's the spirit we have. But they say, but they saw beyond the horizon. Look at this. They were clinging on to their faith. It's clinging on, cling, just cling. But they saw beyond the horizon. They saw beyond the crap. They saw beyond the circumstance. They were, these were people that were like Jesus. It says, for the joy that was set before me, Jesus said, I endured the cross. Isn't that amazing? Like right now, what are you going through? You have to see the horizon. You have to see beyond the present and say, man, there's something amazing that's going to take place. It says, but they saw beyond the horizon the fulfillment of their promises and gladly embraced it from afar. They all lived their lives on earth as those who belong to a whole nother realm. Like they're not, they weren't living for this earth, man. They were living a supernatural life. Like, man, what, what's holding us from living that kind of faith, guys? Like, what's, what's holding you back? I'll tell you what it is. It's you. You're holding you back. No, it's my boss. No, it's you. No, it's my family. No, it's you. Uh, it's my church. Nope, it's you. <laughs> it's the sermons. Nope, it's you. Because God says, with me, we flow. So when the flow stops, there's only one reason for it. Our, our attitude of faith is no longer trying, is no longer fighting, and is no longer believing. God says, you need to be a hero of faith, and you need to see beyond your stuff and look at the horizon and just decide, that whether or not I see it all or some, I'm going to step into some promise in this lifetime. Amen? And, when, and if I don't finish it, my daughter's going to finish it for me. Huh? And, and, and then I have my son Isaac, and he'll finish it. And her kids will finish it. And his kids. And then their kids' kids will. But, but I, I have to live like, man, you better take these bag of bones into that new church building. Like back in, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I want a spot in there. Amen? Like, I want them to just blow it up, make it bigger. Like, why? Because that's what we have to start thinking that way. We got to start talking that way. Like, God, I, man, I, I can see it. Can you see that for you guys? Can you see that or no? Stand to your feet. Let's get out of here. Man, I hope that we would be clingy to our faith. <laughs> like, that would be the only clinginess that we would have, that we would cling, not, not, not cringe, but cling to our faith. Come on, just lift your hand to heaven and just, just say, God, I'm going to cling to my faith. I cling to the promise. Come on, Joseph had an attitude of, of the God who promised was bigger than his deathbed. Like, dang, like the God who promised is bigger than my headache right now. The God who promised is bigger than my financial challenge right now. The God who promised is bigger than what I feel right now. He's bigger. He's greater. Come on. The God of promise is speaking to these dry bones. And he's saying, can these bones live? That's what he asked the prophet Elijah. Can these bones live? And what is your answer? Yes, Lord, they can. Yes. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord, that we are becoming your heroes of faith. Thank you, Father, that we have faith to our core. Thank you for this night, God. Thank you that, that you're the God who has given us mustard seed faith. You've given us faith that, that comes with authority, that comes with dominion. Thank you, Jesus, that we want to have that kind of faith that, that doesn't stay stagnant, but is flowing and moving. And, and though we may not be seeing all the promise, but, but at least we're, we're, we're walking into it. We're walking in the direction of the promise. We're, we're in step with you, Father. And so, Lord, I pray that we would have this peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us to be men and women of faith, Father. Give us the, the hunger and the thirsting, Father, to open our words and to grow deeper in you, Father. I pray all this in Jesus' name, Lord. Come on, we're stepping in. You're going in. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I'm going to say with me, Lord, I will have faith if I have to die trying. If I have to die believing, if I have to die fighting, my faith will trust in you. I will walk in to your prophetic promise for my life, for my family, for my children, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I pray that every single one of you, honestly, that you would just treat your Christian walk differently and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop just being this. <sighs> don't you get tired of yourself sometimes? Seriously, don't you get like, kind of like, like you're just the same old person, same, same argument, same stupid thoughts, right? Like it gets old, doesn't it? Man, we got to stop that noise. Say, man, God, I'm ready. I'm just, ah. I want, I, want, I want fresh faith. I want a renewed, steadfast spirit, God. I want creating me a clean heart, you know? God, ah, I'm going to stop acting the same, talking the same, thinking the same, walking the same, complaining the same. Just, ah, do something in me, right? In Jesus' name, amen. Give three people a high five. All right. All right, so listen, for the next hour, here's what we're going to do. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Where's your faith, man? No, I'm just kidding. No, we're, we're done. Let's, let's receive tithes and offerings. Let's bless God's house. Let's look at this verse real quick. God bless all three of you. All right. Look at this, Proverbs 22, 9. Anyone who gives freely will be blessed. Freely, no, no pressure, huh? It says that that's because he shares his food with those who are poor. Let me tell you something. When, when you bring your tithe, when you bring your offerings, when you build God's house, there's something beautiful. You're blessed. I, I know that the most blessed people that I know are the most generous people. And, uh, and I want you to know that this house is always reaching beyond, you know, our reach. I mean, we have Santa Clarita, but we reach way beyond Santa Clarita. We reach globally, and, uh, and we don't let our size limit our touch. We just don't do that. And so never, ever be the person that, that becomes so stagnant. See, listen, the only way to get out of that stagnation, the only way to get out of that dead place, the only way to get the flow in your life is to have an outlet of giving. Like when you're at your lowest place of life, you know what the best thing to do is? Go win someone to Christ. Go encourage. When you feel discouraged, that's the time you go encourage someone. Why? God said this, and God shall not be mocked. Whatever man sows, that he will also reap. So whatever you give, you get back. But God gives it back to you with so much more blessings. So he says anyone who gives really will be blessed. And I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed coming in. I want to be blessed going. I want to be blessed all the days of my life, but that comes with generosity. Amen.
So today, let's bless God's house. Let's thank him for what he did tonight. And as you give, let me give you a few announcements. You can do text to give. You can give by uh, envelope, cash, check, whatever you like to do. The only announcement we have is tomorrow. Um, we have our Elevate Christian Academy interest meeting. If you're a parent and you have kids um, that are from elementary through junior high, starting August, we are kicking off um, Elevate Christian Academy, which is a, it's not a support group, but it, it's kind of like a, a, a homeschooling support group, but it's way more than that. And we're going to focus on leadership. We're going to focus on uh, math lab, reading lab, science lab, but we're also going to have all kinds of creative teachers. Like we're going to have uh, sculpting. We're going to have arts. We're going to have music. We're going to have all sorts of classes to really help your child take their education to the next level in a Christian uh, environment. They're going to have devotionals. They're going to have worship. It's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal school, and it kicks off in August of 2019. So if you want to come, we have an interest meeting tomorrow, and uh, the time is at 6.30 p.m. at the Annex Building across the street. Come learn more about it. It's been on the radio now for a minute. Uh, it's going out throughout Santa Clarita. It's not just for our church. It's open to the Santa Clarita Valley. And we're actually the first to really do something like what we're going to be doing. And that's exciting. So I can't wait to see what God does with it. And so God said, build me a school. We're going to build them schools. So come check it out. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you as we leave today. We're leaving with refreshing, with joy. We're leaving with peace. And Father, thank you for showing us your love. And it's your love that compels us, God, to be better. Thank you for Elevate Nights, God, a night where we just come and we give you our time, God. We give you our energy, our worship, our praise, our expression. We give you everything. It's a night that we honor once a month and we say, Father, have your way. Do whatever you want. And so thank you for what you did tonight, Father. And, Lord, I pray that as we go pick up our kids, that we just go and thank our teachers for their time their energy, their love that they have poured into our children. Thank you for our youth who also had their Elevate Nights. I pray that they were blessed tonight, Father, and refresh us, protect us, lead us, guide us. And, Lord, I pray for divine favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget Sunday, part two of At the Table. Bye-bye. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.